welcome. Today we're going to show you how to integrate Metaspatial SDK into an existing Android app. I'm Patrick McArdle, a software engineer on the Metaspatial SDK team. In this video, we'll take an existing Android mobile app and add Metaspatial SDK to it, allowing us to build a mobile and a MetaQuest version of our app using the same code base. This video is based on the Integrate Metaspatial SDK into an existing Android app code lab hosted on our docs. You can follow along there to make it easier to copy in necessary code. Now let's dive in. Make sure your MetaQuest headset is in developer mode and you have the latest version of Android Studio downloaded. For this tutorial, we'll use a sample Android mobile application provided by Meta. You can follow along with this sample or use your own Android app. If this is your first time adding Metaspatial SDK to an app, we recommend you follow along with our provided sample project. Let's take a quick look at what our sample app does. I'll run it here in our emulator. This is a simple example of a Media Viewer app. You can swipe up and down, swipe through the carousels, or click into one of the pieces of media. Let's set up our project so that we have a mobile phone version of our app and a MetaQuest version of our app. We'll use build variants to do this. Open your app slash build.gradle file and add the following code inside the Android block. The mobile flavor will represent our phone app and the Quest flavor will represent our MetaQuest app driven by Metaspatial SDK. Then, set up folders for each build variant. In our provided sample, we have already set up a mobile and Quest folder for you. Now, we'll need manifests for each build variant. For now, we'll just copy the existing manifest in main into mobile and Quest. Finally, sync your project with Gradle. Our new build variants will now show up. Navigate to Build, select Build Variant, and change to Quest Debug. Now, our manifest in the Quest folder will be used when building the app. This will become useful later. We've got build variants set up, so now it's time to bring in Metaspatial SDK. Metaspatial SDK is deployed to Maven Central so that it can be easily added to projects. Add the dependencies into your app slash build.gradle file. To make sure all of our Spatial SDK packages are on the same version, we'll use a variable. Sync your project with Gradle to download the packages. There are many other packages beyond the three I've added here. Check out the developer website to see the full list. It's time to create an immersive activity with Spatial SDK. This is an Android activity, which will launch a VR scene in our headset. In the Quest folder, create a folder structure that matches your package. If you're using the media app template, this has already been done for you. Create a new class called Immersive Activity. Fill out Immersive Activity with the following code. You can copy this from the code lab. Let's inspect this code. First, Immersive Activity is subclassing App System Activity. App System Activity comes from the Spatial SDK Toolkit package. It is a subclass of the Android Activity class that adds support for creating an immersive VR scene. Next, the OnSceneReady function is where we add entities into our scene. You can see here we're adding an Environment 3D model and a Skybox image to our scene but we haven't added these asset files to the project yet. Download the assets from the code lab and add them into your project. Add the skybox image into your resources slash drawable folder.
and add the environment GLB file into your quest slash assets folder. Next, we need to update our quest slash Android manifest file to point to our new immersive activity. We also need to add a number of permissions and features to enable VR support for our app on the MetaQuest. Update your file using the sample code from the code lab. The major changes that we've made here are add the required features and permissions for VR support on the Quest, remove the intent filter from the main activity, and add in the immersive activity and set it as the launcher activity. Finally, we need to update main slash Android manifest to remove references to the main activity. We've set up our app to launch into our immersive activity when our app is set to the Quest Build variant. Plug your Quest in and deploy your app to it. You should see something like this. Our app is launching a fully immersive activity, but all we see is this nice 3D scene. The phone app we started with is nowhere to be found. It's time for us to bring it into 3D. In Metaspatial SDK, you can use panels to bring Android UI into your immersive scene. Panels are very powerful, and there are a number of ways to render UI in them. In this tutorial, we'll simply point our panel at the main activity from our phone app. Create an ID for the panel by adding a new IDs.xml file. We'll place this in our resources slash values folder. In immersive activity, add a panel entity to our scene and use the ID that we just created. Now we need to link our panel entity to the main activity class. We'll do this by using the register panels function. Notice the activity class parameter here. This is where we pass in the main activity from our phone app. And that's it. Build and run the app. You'll now see a panel in the scene rendering the phone app from our original project. You can interact with this panel using your controllers or hands, swipe up and down, through the carousels, or even jump into a movie. The ability to add Metaspatial SDK to an existing Android app makes it extremely powerful. You can spatialize your app and go from a tiny screen to limitless 3D space. Metaspatial SDK gives you the flexibility to take your mobile app to the next level. If you want to learn more, go and check out our documentation site and try out our sample apps. We can't wait to see what you build.